Hey guys, this video is a little bit longer than my usual videos and for one really good reason, it is full of informational tips on how to deal with a fire in your motorhome, your camper van or your caravan, the different types of fire extinguisher, how you use them, which is something most of us I don't think know very well. Although it has got a little bit of a product review in there, most of it is pure information that I really, really urge you to watch. So I know it's a little bit longer than usual, but I really do hope you find it educational and useful. Take care. Those of you who have followed me for a while will hopefully know that I do product reviews a little bit differently to some other YouTubers. And that is not to say that all other YouTubers are the same. There are some fantastic, very honest, and very thorough YouTube reviews. There are also some people who get a product and two hours later write a review about how it's the best thing they've ever seen and it's perfect and you should all go out and buy one. Not naming names. So I decided a while ago to do things a bit differently. And my MO for products that I want to review for myself and that I think would be useful for you guys as motorhomers and camper banners. I figured that I would take a product and I would review it for a month or two, I'd use it, I'd try and break it, um, and then I could actually give you a really thorough assessment on what the product's like, the pros and the cons, and just give you an overview so you can decide for yourself whether it's something that you want to spend your money on. And that's worked really, really well for me. I can't think off the top of my head of a single product that I reviewed over the last couple of years that I don't still use. You, know, you can look at my sat nav, you can look at my toilet cleaner, controversial though that is, because I know some people, it's like Marmite, that stuff, either love it or hate it. Um, but I'm still using them because I still think they're brilliant products because I've used them a lot. However, how do you do that with a fire extinguisher? Because quite frankly, I don't want to use a fire extinguisher a lot. And so when a company called Fire Safety contacted me and said, look, we have got what we think is perfect for van life, for motorhomers, for camper vanners, as a fire extinguisher, I was A, a little bit skeptical, because I'm always really skeptical. Um, and B, I was like, well, I'm not just going to say this is brilliant without testing it. And they're like, no, we get that. I was like, well, I don't really want to use a fire extinguisher in my van. They're like, no, we get that too. Why don't you come to us? I'm like, you're in Luton, you're freaking miles away. It didn't really, I didn't know. But then the more I thought about it, and the more I looked into it, the more I was like, actually, this looks perfect. Because the problem with normal fire extinguishers is you have to have it about three different types because you never know what type of fire you're going to have, especially in a motorhome where you've got like diesel and cooking and electric, like all that. So you never really know what you're going to be faced with. And then you've got the whole issue of servicing them, and they're heavy, and all of this other stuff. And I was like, actually, they might have hit on this, they might have solved this, but I'm not going to do a review video on it without testing it. So I am today on my way up to Luton to play with fire and fire extinguishers. Now, I have done a little bit of fire training. I know a lot of people never have and never have fired a fire extinguisher uh, before, but I have because I was in the Navy, so we did a bit of fire training. Um, we did the whole going into the burning block bit and um, also, you know, using the fire extinguisher and stuff. So I'm lucky that I've got a little bit of experience. I certainly wouldn't go as a firefighter, um, but I have got a little bit of experience. So it's going to be really interesting how this one compares to my knowledge. Admittedly, that was a few years ago. So that's today's job. We are driving in the middle of January. Um, going to Symbols, okay, there's no colours as such. Yeah. So, no colours to worry about. Uh, no, don't worry about colour. You have to just part the seven, no, oh, sorry, the six balls there. Yeah. And then the black. Yeah. I was saying I haven't had any alcohol. Okay. Is that gone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm more competitive and I'm actually like, what the hell am I doing? This is not what I thought I'd be doing today. Ooh. Stay. Ah! Oh, hang on. There we go. Not the worst. No, not at all. Not the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. 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 <laughs> right, so I'm here with yeah. Andrew from Fire Safety Stick. Hi there and talk to me about what the fire safety stick is right. first of all. Okay, so the fire safety stick is a unique type of fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. Now, in the caravans and motorhomes, most people have something like this, which is dry powder extinguisher. Yep. Okay. Uh, very, very 
uh, capable of fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. It's very good. It works on a lot of types of fires, but there are some issues with it, okay. potentially. What does it work on? What doesn't it work so, on? Basically, fires are done into different classifications. Yeah. So you've got Class A, which is solid flammables, so that's yep. your wood, paper, textiles. B, flammable liquid, so petrol, oil, diesel. Yeah. Uh, C, flammable gases. Okay. Now, with the um, powder ones, they, some of them can also do electrical fires as well. Yeah. Certain levels, and that's kind of it. Okay. With the fire safety stick. Yeah. That will do A, B, C, in electrical fires, rate right up to 100,000 volts, and also F, which is cooking oils and fats. Oh, okay. So it can be used in the kitchen. This can potentially replace your fire blanket as well. This lasts for typically five years and really should be serviced every year. Now, let me just explain a bit more about that. So How basically... Many people have serviced theirs every year? I know, and that's, and that's a problem. These things generally say they don't need to be serviced. That's five years, they don't need to be serviced. Yep. However, that's based on it being uh, on a wall in the home at room temperature. Yep. The problem in the van, for instance, mm -hmm. is you've got the vibration while it's being moved around. Yep. You've got the temperature fluctuations going up and down. Is it cold at the moment? It's not Very cold much. at the moment. <laughs> so what happens is the powder inside yep. then clumps together. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the shocking thing about this. Is that caused by the movement or by the cold? Combination of both. Basically. Okay. All Combination right. of both. Now, what shocks people is, so this is a 1 kg uh, dry powder extinguisher. Yeah. Actually weighs about two and a quarter kilos. Okay. But the yep. thing that actually shocks people is the discharge time on that is just seven seconds. That doesn't sound like a lot. It's not a lot. No. It's not a lot. And you, you think, you start squeezing it. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A bit quicker then, sorry. But it, it really, and that's it, it's gone. Yeah. And is that enough to put a fire out normally? Like an in a motorhome kind of fire? It, it, it can be, but it depends on how you're using it and it's the technique. Yeah. And that's the difference is that people aren't using the correct technique on how to use it. Okay. And that can be the issue. Yeah. They're panicking, they're squeezing it, they're spraying it everywhere and it's gone. What is the correct technique? Firstly, see what the situation is, assess, assess the situation with the fire. Yeah. If you can get back from it to start with, do yep. so just to assess it. You, you normally have a pin on here. Yeah. Pull that pin out. Don't start squeezing it before you take the pin out because you'll bend the pin. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. And that does happen. Yeah. You should then, basically, you just do light puffs from it. Gentle sweeping motion and light puffs. Oh, so you don't just yeah. hold it down and point? No. But I'd have got this wrong, wouldn't I? I would have failed fire exactly school. That's exactly the point, and that's exactly the point. Okay. Because when I say seven seconds, that is people just going holding it down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But actually, the correct way of doing it is just gentle puffs bit by bit. But you know what? Yeah. In a panic situation, you're not going to be doing that. No. So I was saying about that, and that, that, that seven seconds on the normal discharge yeah. time on it. Yeah. That, um, if it's not being serviced, if it's been left in the vehicle, vibration, etc. Yeah. Power clumps together. Yeah. Et cetera, that can go down to just two or three seconds. Oh, really? Yes. And is that because the clumps don't get out? Exactly. It blocks okay. the mechanism. Yeah, okay. The mechanism. Uh, they can also other things as well, so it can lose its pressure over a period of time and things like that as yeah. well. Uh, the O-rings inside can perish. Yeah. For instance. So, yeah, there's a lots of... Again, very capable, but there can be issues with so it. So this is where the annual servicing becomes so important if yes, you've got one of those. Exactly. And how much roughly to service one of them would you expect well, to pay? It's a difficult one because we actually used to work for a company that did do professional servicing for commercial activities. Yeah. The problem is, is that that's, the, the cost of doing that can be anywhere from £5 to £20. Oh, wow. The, okay. issue, the issue is, of course, is if they're just doing one at a time, yeah. then that's not cost effective for them. No. So they need to do large groups. And that's yeah. why... These, it's very, it's not really economic to service them easily. Yes. And that's the point, and that's yeah. the problem. Strictly speaking, to service it the correct way yeah. would be to depressurise it, take out the mechanism, yeah. and inspect the powder inside to make sure it's all clear. Oh, okay. okay. Often what people will just do is they will just move it up or down, yeah. and then you could feel the powder inside and whether it's come together or not. Oh. So you can, you know, again, they can do that, but that's not really the, the best way to do it. No. You don't really know what's there. Because you can get rid of the, the, the larger clumps, yeah. but all it takes is a very small, tiny clump in yeah. there to block the Yeah, because that's not a huge nozzle, is no, it? Exactly, no, exactly. Okay. So you can have problems with it. Yep. Um, and that's where something like this comes in. Okay, I'm going to sound really stupid, but that, mm -hmm. compared to that... Yeah. So, discharge time on that is seven seconds. Yeah. Over 50 seconds. Do you know what? It's a huge difference in weight. Or even 100 seconds. Did you say 50? 50, nearly a minute. Five zero. Yes. It says that on there, That weighs 215 grams. That weighs 
just about two and a quarter. <laughs> I can straighten my arm. I have muscle. I mean, that I'm barely holding. That yeah. one I'm really having yeah. to push up. That's so, insane. So, yeah. think about it. So discharge time, big difference. Huge difference. Remember I said that lasts for five years and should be serviced every year? Yeah. Lasts for at least 15 years. So yeah. three times longer than that. Yeah. Needs no servicing during that time at all. At all? At you don't all. even have to, like, shake no, it, no, move no, it. All. Am I going to set this no, off? No, no. Because inside <laughs> it is this. Yeah. So this is a solid resin. Okay, so if you can imagine, yeah. you've got a solid resin inside there, basically. And is that the whole way up, I'm assuming? Uh, yeah. yeah, so what you've got is you've got two cartridges in there. Yep. So this is the 100 second one. Okay. Okay, so that's just basically, essentially, it's got four cartridges in it. Oh, okay. So right. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. Yep. Activating it is really simple. Well, I'm not going to set it off now, obviously. <laughs> but it will lead on to it. Basically, yep. you take the top cap off. You would normally, this is a demo one, but normally you have a black resin. You basically take the bottom bit out, a bit like matchbox. Side of a match. Box, yeah. And you just strike it. And you what if you're one of those people like me mm. who has about seven matches before they actually get one to light? Uh, it'll still go. Will it? Yeah, exactly. You just yeah. have to so pop it. You know what? Every time we say, if you miss it the first time, you'll get it the second time. But it's so easy. Okay, so you strike it. Yeah. So that's just the lid. You just throw that's that exactly away. Correct, yeah. You take it off, you strike, yeah. and it comes out of that end. Yeah, I'm going to stop you there for a start. You're going to hold it that way so it's away from you. But it comes out this end? No, it comes out there. Oh, it comes out that? So you kind there. of strike it and it... Exactly. Ah. Now, during that time, this will start to get warm. Yep. That's why you're holding by a plastic handle. Makes sense. So that's fine. Makes sense. Okay. And how would you... Okay, so how would you, if you've got a, a chip pan on fire, yeah. do you literally point it again yes. at that? Yeah, you, and that's the thing. So the great thing about this is you don't need any special technique for it. Okay. Because we said about powder, you do little puffs like yeah. that. The way you do a foam extinguisher would be different. Yeah. Like you squeeze it, but you actually layer the foam on top of the fire. Because there's no hand, like there's no lever that you can't do no. a puff. You just Correct. point it. Once you've activated it, that's it going. At the top of the fire or at the bottom of the fire? You do it towards the base of the fire. Basically okay. what happens is it interacts with the oxygen of the flames of the fire. Ah, three points of a fire triangle. Yeah. I vaguely remember that from okay. school. Okay, so, yeah, so it takes the oxygen away from the fire. Yeah. But what I stress here is it does not take your oxygen away. But, you yes. can still keep on breathing. Okay, okay, so let's talk about that. What yeah. What is this? What does it emit? Right. How toxic is it? Okay. Because we've spoken about that one. Yeah. And what, what is this? Okay, right. So that is a, a secret ingredient. It's a special resin essentially containing potassium nitrate. I'm going to nod like I know what that is. Okay, right. This is, uh, this is, this is stable. So this does not go off at all. Yep. This is in the state it's in and it's completely safe. Yep. When you activate it, you do actually start a mini fire inside and it breaks this down. But by breaking it down, yeah. that then becomes two main key parts to it. Nitrogen gas. Yep. Nitrogen gas, totally inert gas, 78% of our atmosphere. Yep. Nitrogen gas. Yep. All that's doing is that's now creating the pressure inside the aerosol to drive out the active agent. Yep. Okay, because that's why at the moment, that's why it's solid resin. You can drop that. We've even got videos of cutting it, drilling it. It's still fine. It'll still work. Okay. okay. All right. So that nitrogen acts as the aerosol. Yeah. The active agent is the other part of that compound, which is basically it's called a potassium free radical. So basically, it will interact with the oxygen around the flame. Yeah. But not your oxygen. Okay. So I mentioned cooking oils and fats, for instance. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, it's got a really long discharge time. Yeah. Once it's going, it won't stop. It'll, it'll just keep on discharging yep. until it's finished. So if you can imagine, you've got a, a pan of oil on fire. Yep. Activate it, point it at the fire. That'll put the fire out yep. really quickly, really easily. Okay. Meanwhile, you've got you know nearly a minute's worth of this to keep pointing at it. Yep. Carry on doing so. Obviously, if you can, you then need to kill the heat to the hob. Yeah. So obviously, it's no long thing. By doing that, you're preventing any of it reigniting. Yep. Allowing time for it to cool down. Okay. Yeah, that makes honest, sense. This, this doesn't cool the fire down itself, but by preventing a fire from reigniting, yeah. it, the temperature will naturally go down from it. One thing that strikes me, and we're going we're gonna to have a play with it, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. but if, if this was on fire here, mm, say that was yeah, the fire, yeah. I feel like, I mean, how far away would I be? Because I probably wouldn't have gloves. I'd be like, oh my God, there's a fire, and be very cool and yeah. calm and. So, um, but how close would I need to be? Because this one, I feel like I could stand, well, like you said, as far away as you can, mm -hmm. but I feel like I'd be a lot closer. Right, so if people do make observation. Now, what you would do is, obviously, space, space allowing. Yeah. Okay, so ideally... Yeah, the toilet's here, I'm like there, yeah. So ideally, obviously, you'd stand well back, yep. assess the situation, activate it from a distance, start spraying it, arms around, so obviously, yep. you can see me on the camera here. Yep. So you do it from, obviously, quite both back, arms around. Yeah. Already you're suppressing the fire. Okay. You then walk towards the fire, 
So all the time being suppressed, yep. all be brought down, yep. and then you get close. And to be honest, if that was on fire there, you'll see for yourself in a minute. Yeah. That's, actually, that sort of distance is more than enough to actually put it okay. down anyway. So, so you don't have to be like literally, no, no. I was thinking like a chip pan, they spit uh, uh, and the uh, fire exactly, and everything. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be that close. Heat. So let's talk about toxic, because one yeah. thing that I've got, I've got a dog, obviously, yeah. in my van. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even if I wasn't so concerned about me, which mm -hmm. I am, but yeah. hey, one thing I'd be really concerned about, if, if I've got a fire and I'm trying to deal with it, and yeah. he's probably sitting right yeah. there, yeah. what does that emit and how dangerous is that right. to humans okay. and animals? Totally safe. So potassium oxide, uh, sorry, the, the potassium free radicals bind to the oxygen of the fire, mm -hmm. becomes potassium oxide. Yeah. Very, very fine particles. Again, when you see the demo, you'll see that doing, and yeah. it just dispenses into the atmosphere. Yeah. But it's totally safe. Okay. Very, very, very fine inert particles. So it does no harm to you, yeah. your animals, yeah. the ozone layer, or the environment at all. It's completely clean. That's Because we've all seen pictures like the powder ones where it just creates yes. chaos. Well, acid, and also it's the damage it causes. So in an in a engine fire, for instance, yeah. okay, that will, because the pallet goes over, it gets everywhere. Um, typically in a, in a car engine or a van engine, it's the pallet will get inside the engine itself. Yeah. That's going to mean an engine rebuild. You're not going to be able to be able to carry on driving that. Yes. But what also happens is that the powder gets onto things like the wiring. Yeah. And you might think it's nice and clean, might be, but that will slowly deteriorate and disintegrate the wiring. So you start Does getting it? Short, it eats it away? Yeah. I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know a lot so about it. It's so caustic, one. it will actually start dissolving it. So you will have problems with that as well. But the thing is, you may not have that at the time, but you'll have it in over a period of time. So you've got one here that's 50 seconds, yeah. which is already, I'll do maths, five times, say, longer than this one. Yeah. And you've got one that's 100. Yes. Now, if you can't turn them off, mm -hmm. why would you ever choose to have 100? Well, one thing I want to stress is that this, either of these, or any extinguisher really, is all about capturing the fire at the early stages. Yes. Once a fire becomes established, yeah. that's no longer a job for a fire extinguisher. Yeah. Get out, stay out. Yes. But what you can do with a fire safety stick is activate it, leave it in there, you escape to safety, close the door behind you, of course. Yeah. It will still carry on discharging and mm -hmm. repressing the fire in your absence. Yeah. Okay. Now, we have had examples where that actually has then put the fire out while the people have been away. Yeah. Obviously, there's lots of variables there. It depends on what's on fire inside. But yeah. at the very least, it will control it, calm it down, and obviously buy more time for the fire brigade to arrive. So, say you had, uh, say you had a chip pan on fire, which yeah. I think is fairly you yeah. know, reasonable in a motorhome, yeah. and you um, literally, it was too big for you to control, yeah. and I'm going to stress that again, these are not, oh my God, my whole van's on fire, point a little stick at it. No. it, it they, they won't do that, but then neither would this one. They, none no, of them would correct, do that. Correct. But if, could you light it, obviously yeah. take the thing off, yeah. And literally put it on the floor, even though the chip pan's up there, shut the door. Would it do anything because it's a gas? It, 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 it will do. It will fill the environment. Obviously, ideally, yeah. and obviously, again, we're all going to be panicking at this stage, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, absolutely, if it's but that you, big, yeah. You can put it kind of at a similar level, so yeah. by the sink, for instance, or yes. whatever. I do it. So obviously, if it's, it's down there, I'm not saying it won't do anything, yeah. but obviously, you can get it closer to it, yeah. better. Yeah. Okay, but again... Don't risk your own safety. No. So you showed me an image. In fact, we'll put these images on yeah. now of um, a fridge fire. Yes. Uh, the, the vent at yes. the back. Yes. And they couldn't get to the fridge. Correct mm -hmm. me if I go wrong yeah. at any yeah. point here, but they couldn't get to the fridge because it had gone behind it. Mm -hmm. um, so they were trying to get to it through the vents outside. Yeah. And a traditional extinguisher, because the slats were going upwards, it couldn't reach it. Yeah. So there's a couple of points here. So as you said, it was a, it was a gas fired uh, fridge fire. From my understanding, is that and you got the vents. Thing. Now yeah. they actually tried to use a foam extinguisher uh, okay. on the outside. Yeah. Now the foam is I briefly touched on earlier on is yeah. the fact that you need to layer it on top of the fire. Yes. Okay. Uh, and it's obviously got to get through the vents as well. Yeah. And obviously they wouldn't be able to direct it correctly. Yeah. So that's why it didn't work in that case. Uh, okay. okay. So obviously, in an ideal situation, if they know what they're doing. Obviously they could have potentially have pulled the vent out. Yes. It might have been easier said than done at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And True. they'd be able to get the foam extinguisher towards it. Yeah. Fortunately, somebody nearby had. Fire safety stick, yep. and they were able to just activate it and just point it kind of this side of the vent. But because yep. the, 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 the vapor was get, going through the vent and then just encompassing the whole area, yep. then that put the fire out straight away. They even okay. tried to use a power extinguisher on the inside, but of course there's no access there, so yep. that was not going to make any difference at all. So they were, they were, they were literally throwing you know, dishwater at it just to do anything. <laughs> just do it. anything. But the yep. fire safety stick put the fire out like that. So clever. Really, really. I mean, the technology probably escapes me a little bit, mm. but the fact that you can have it in the van yeah. and it doesn't need servicing. Because you're a relatively new company. Because yes. that was one of my first questions when I came in. And in the nicest possible yeah. way, if this is so amazing, mm. 
why isn't it everywhere? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and as you explained to me, yeah. you know, would you explain away. Surprise people actually, yes, although it's relatively new to this country, it actually has been around the world for quite a while. In fact, it was originally developed back in the nineteen sixties. It was originally done as for the spacecraft going up to the moon. Mm -hmm. And it was developed as a fixed fire suppression system. So I needed something that could put fires out that would cause no harm to anybody, yep. cause no harm to the instrumentation, and deal with a whole range of fires. Can't exactly open a window, can you, to vent it not out really, in space? No, no, no really, fair enough. No. So that's a, they originally developed this, this resin. Yep. And then it's over the, sort of the last uh, 15 years that the Italians are now taking it, and they developed it to the unit we have now with how it's activated and things like that. Yep. Our background is actually from a fire safety company. Yep. So we uh, had a, a commercial fire company which would deal with commercial extinguishers like this mm -hmm. to sell them, service them, etc., as well as things like smoke ventilation systems, yep. um, fire alarms, security alarms, and lots of other things. But the impact of this made me thinking, actually, you know what? This is a game changer. So we've now no longer with that company, and we're specialised purely on the fire safety. And what was your first, be honest, when you first saw that, were you a bit sceptical? Or were you a bit like, oh my God, it's amazing, straight from the off? It's, it's one of these things that um, Sergio RMD, so he's yep. obviously had the other company before and went over to Italy to have a look at it. And initially he was thinking, well, this, this sounds a bit too good to be true. Absolutely, yeah. So what happened is while they were out in Italy, the Italian said, look, you know more about the, the fires and extinguishers, so have a play with it. Yep. So they tested it on all sorts of fires, whether it be gas fires, petrol fires, all sorts of things, doing repeated tests over and over and over again, uh, leaving it in a confined space, leaving it in there letting it put the fire out on its own, yep. took care of all of that. Wow. So from that we're thinking, this is a game changer. Yeah. So. And I think that's the hardest, because it does look so different, and most of us in normal world, we've never really fired a fire extinguisher. We've never no. had a play. We've never been in a situation with a fire. Mm. And we've been brought up that that's what you have, and that will massively save you in every situation. Yeah. And of course it won't, but we've never really thought about it. Correct. And also... Do you know the different classifications of fire? No! And which extinguisher to use in that fire? I know we did it in school, but that was a while ago. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I haven't got a clue. And then you've got, the, as we said before, you've got the individual techniques as well. Yep. So this, the, what we like to think about, the versatility of this is it'll do all the major types of fires that you're going to come across. Yep. Okay, it's not going to make things worse. Um, and it's really, you know, you don't have to worry about the technique. You yep. literally just activate it, point it at the fire, that's it. Yeah. And it gives you that extra option of being able to, you're thinking, you know what, too big, getting out of here. What about things like batteries? Like, um, so I'm about to have lithium fitted yeah. in my van. Okay. Um, would it work on lithium, lead iron, AGM, all types of batteries? Right, okay. So, although we said it does electrical fires, which is 100,000 volts, yeah. so like your appliances and what have you, yeah. absolutely fine, workshops, um, it's not certified for lithium batteries. Okay. Okay. Now, the reason being is those are rechargeable batteries, basically. Yeah. Okay, the reason being is that what happens with those is it will, we've, we've tested it on smaller lithium batteries. Yep. It will put the initial fire out. It will it'll kill the flames. Yep. But what happens is that you get like thermal runaway. So what happens is that the fire, it's, it's a bit like barbecue uh, uh, coals. Oh, yeah. Well, the they fire just go is coming. So it'll, yeah, re okay. it'll reignite. So you might put that fire out initially, yep. but it will reignite. Yep. Also, depending on the type of uh, lithium battery, yep. uh, some of them can also, you've got a risk of them exploding anyway. But would using, if, if say one did catch on fire, yeah. would using that make it worse? It wouldn't make it worse, but again, you need to be very careful because depending on the type of battery, yeah. you have that risk of it potentially exploding. So the answer to your question is that it, it will put initial fire out, yeah. but it won't deal with it ultimately. Okay, so it's worth looking at that. But for the lead acid and... Absolutely all the rest fine. of them, yeah, they should fine. be all right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Do, do If you've got one of them in your van, yeah. do you ever need to do anything with it at all? Yes. Warranty? What I would suggest, though, is what you should do is check the black resin on the top yeah. to make sure that's still firm and hard. It, it, if you're under extreme temperature situations, yeah. okay, that potentially can go soft. So you can just tap it with your fingertip, yeah. and if that's soft, not a problem, bring it indoors, room temperature, within a day, it's like hard again. Okay. So always make sure that's, that's sound. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but also make sure you've still got the striker cap as well. Now, would you ever not? Well, you shouldn't do. Mm. But here's a top tip. Again, when you're mounted, so obviously that's the top, that's the bottom. Yeah. That's where the striker cap is. Yeah. Mount it upside down. Because um, you've got the vibration of the van, or whatever. These are in, these are in pretty pretty sturdy. Anyway. Yeah. But you know what? That's not going to fall out. Yeah. Okay. So having it that way. Yeah. All you need to do, make sure you've got the striker. Make sure that's sound. That's all you need to worry about. If the lid does fall off, yep. um, and then you have a dog who chews it, yep. 
Um, is it unsafe to keep without a lid? Do I need to contact you to get a replacement I, I, lid? I would keep a lid on it. Yep. Uh, oh, that's kind of right, but anyway, <laughs> only to protect that black resin. Okay, it's, fair it, enough. It can, it, you know, again, you, dog it, you can chip away, you can But if you do off, lose the lid, you'll be all right for a few days without oh, it. It won't absolutely. like explode or no, I, do I, anything crazy. The yeah, only okay. way you're gonna activate it is by striking it. Yeah, that's okay. the only way. Okay, cool. So yeah, and again, obviously, yes, if ever you lose one of those, yeah. again, get in touch and we can do replacements of those as well. Brilliant. But yeah, so that, that's the only thing you need to check for it. That's it. Was there anything else? What have I not asked you that I should have asked you or I should know about? Do you about? know what? I think we've pretty well covered everything. Yeah, we've done well. Because see, the, the thing about it is it's versatility, so it's ease of use. Yeah. Okay. Again, I always want to remind people that it's all about tackling fires at the early stages. Yes. Okay. So once a fire has got too big to be, and we generally say, like Fire Brigade's advice is, if a fire's got to the size of a waste paper basket, that's too big. Yeah. Walk away from it. Get out, stay out. Yeah. Uh, another tip as well is if you've got, uh, if there's a fire, make sure obviously you know where your point of exit is. Yes. And make sure that's behind you. Don't be on the wrong side of the fire. Yeah. So if you are having to tackle fire, then make sure you're, you're back to the exit, ready to get escape. Yep. Okay. So that's important. So that's always to remember. But yeah, other than that, it's that really. It's that simple. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah, Thank you, yeah, Andrew. Go. Let's go play with fire. Oh dear. So what we got there? Water and a bit of petrol, did you say? Yes. All right. Nice. Very simple. It comes off. Yeah. Okay. Don't need that part. Part there. Put together and strike. Now, with no pressure. Let, let the face just do the work. Now we come out here. And this is okay to breathe. Yeah. Wow. There's like nothing there. That's absolutely really cool. Absolutely safe to be. And you'll watch now it's completely all flat away. And I say, in the motor, obviously, again, you'll just leave the windows open and you see now it's all already venting away. Yeah. But nothing, nothing to it at all. That's cool. But you're right, you can see how a 50 second stick or one of those powder ones totally obscures your vision. Yeah. That's the trough. And there's no residue in that either. No. Awesome. That's really cool. Did I spray my thing? Sure. Yes, you did, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. Well, that's good. Oh, and trash the shoes. Yeah. See so again already. It's, it's, it's gone. It, it starts to go. Yeah. Yeah. Two minutes. It's gone. And what is the vapor? The vapor. That's that's. Is that the, what we were talking about earlier? Yes, isn't exactly. It? But, yeah. No. So it's basically, basically it's safe to breathe. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it is. it's a chemical reaction with the oxygen in the flame. Yeah. Did you see when you play it back? You'll yeah. see. I've just pointed at it. As soon as it's hit the flame, it starts eating the flame, and then yeah. it just push it away. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. So it's a combination of the nitrogen gas as the propulsion. Yep. And then obviously initially it's a potassium free radical, but it's potassium that then binds onto the oxygen becomes yeah. potassium oxide. Yep. So potassium oxide are very small particles, in fact about five or six microns in size. Yeah. And that effectively is, I'm going to call it a smoke, because technically it is a smoke. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's just those very fine particles that you just see now that it's facing into the atmosphere. What you're doing, yeah. arms length. Yeah. Okay, so don't get too close. Arms length. Yeah. Vapors, you saw the vapors coming out here. Yeah. So you want to be aiming around here, yeah. and then you'll start seeing it pushing away. Keep the angle the same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because what you'll happen if you'll see it, if you go like that, the vapors are now going to go here. Then. So it's not the base. Yeah. It's okay. the base of the fire. So put it down there. Yeah. Just, just let it walk it out, walk it out slowly, blend your top, <laughs> and then just. No rush. Okay. No rush. No panic. Lid comes off. Yeah. Don't need that one. Yeah. Go that way. Flat tip. So you struck a match before. Yeah, we had this conversation as well. I'm not always the best at doing it first time. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So all you're doing is putting the two together. Yeah. And just lightly push away. Okay. Right. There's no and you'll there would be no pressure here. Yeah. So it's not going to shoot at your hand. You, it will just start vaping. Obviously, okay. do it away from your face. Yeah. Right. So together, very gently, and you'll just push away and strike. Okay. Yep. So the foam clip up. They're not really doing a whole lot, no, are they? So you absolutely find it yellow. Yeah, so, so a bit on. Lid up. Put the two together. Things together. Flash strike together. Strike away from your face. Is this is the. Oh, oh. oh. Oh, 
they're really muddy, and <laughs> then my dog walking through. But why did it come back on itself? Because the, the, I, the, the angle. Did I lift it up? So like, when you watch the video, back, yeah. the angle condenser came back. That's why we use fuel, so it's not easy. Yeah, no, it was. It came back so quick as well. Exactly. Amazing. So, but you had long enough, and that's yes. for 25 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had plenty of time to pick it out. Can you imagine if you had the 50? Yeah. And that's, it's just so light and easy to move around. That's right. That's right. So that's now. How, how hot is that? Now? That's yet, yeah, so. I mean, yeah. it's warm, it's not going to burn yeah. you. No, that, that there, again, that's what that back handles. Yeah. So, nice warm. It's recyclable now. Mm -hmm. Aluminium, plastic. Well, that was fascinating. Really, really. I'll be honest, more fascinating than I thought it was going to be. It was scary how much I didn't know about fire safety um, and scary how much the general public, most of us, don't know about fire safety. Stupid things like um, it never occurred to me that traditional extinguishers were built for, for motorhomes, they were built for static buildings. So they weren't designed to be shaken around, to be moved, to go over lumps and bumps in the road. And also, they weren't designed for the huge temperature differences that you get in a motorhome. And also, it didn't really occur to me. You just kind of see your fire extinguisher and mentally just go, yeah, tick, got that, done, brilliant. But it never really occurred to me, which is probably very naive, that if you don't maintain that, when you actually come to need it, and you'll probably only need it once, you know, because that's never. But when you come to need it, it won't work and it won't do what you need it to do. And yeah, it was fascinating. Really, really fascinating. And those guys are doing such a good job of trying to educate people. Even if you don't buy a fire safe suit, they're not saying the other extinguishers don't work, but they've very, very clearly said a couple of times, they absolutely do work. They're not saying that you, know, you have to have the fire safe stick and nothing else will work, which I really like about the way that they operate. What they are saying is that if you don't do the maintenance and the servicing and the checks, it's not going to work, which is fair. And the nice thing about the fire safety stick is they don't have to do any of that maintenance or servicing or checks. It just works. Um, so I have to say I am really, really impressed. And, and I am, uh, well, I'm looking forward to never using one. <laughs> In that spirit, the lovely people at Fire Safety Stick have actually given me one to give away to one of you. So if you would like to never use one either, hopefully, fingers crossed, all you need to do is leave a comment below this video telling us what was the thing that you learned most from this video because it's intriguing to see what people did and didn't know or the point that you were most impressed by with the, uh, with the stick. So drop your comment below, make sure that you're following Wandering Bird on YouTube and I will pick someone at random. I'll give you uh, a week from the day that this video goes live to enter the competition and then after that, I will announce it uh, both on my YouTube channel and I'll also announce it over on Instagram. So if you follow me over on there, you can find out the winner there. So keep an eye out for that. And I also, they've also given me a 10% discount to pass on to you. So if you would like to get your own fire safety stick for your van, for your boat, for your car, for your tractor, um, then you can do that. I will drop the link below in the notes and you can use my code to get 10% off. Thank you as always for your time. I hope you found that useful and I will definitely see you in the next video. Bye.